Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kubo and we are back with some more Escape from Monkey Island. Where I was actually a little bit in doubt about what to do, um, we just talk, talk to this girlish ex-pirate turned perfume salesman. Um, yeah, let's, obviously let's return to the scene of the crime. Hey there, money bags. Very funny, Mr. Threepwood. Are you enjoying the money you stole? Hey, I'm innocent. There's right, and I'm a 20 carat brooch. It was the no nosed man. Oh, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Of course, I used to, until you came along, that is. I can feel the blame. Eh, enough about me. How's the banking business? Oh, just great, thanks to you. Now I'm broke, and nobody on this island would trust me with their money ever again. What am I going to do now? I'll find the guy who did it and wreak vengeance upon his soul. That won't help me much, but watching you fall on the sword would be entertaining. Well, you could have a bake sale. I've only met one person who could sell pastries to pirates, and he's in real estate. You could steal enough to start your bank again. I'm a banker. I don't know anything about stealing. Yeah, at least you still have your help. That's true, but my health won't buy me a comfortable retirement. Good point. Let's talk about something else. Have you seen someone go by here carrying a bag of loot? What does he look like? Sort of like me. Yes, I've seen him. But he didn't have a bag with him. Really? Where? I'm looking at him! When are you gonna reopen the bank? Inspector Canard won't let me inside. So even if I could afford to reopen it, I'm not allowed. Why aren't you allowed inside? The inspector says that it's a crime scene and needs to remain sealed until the case is closed. I actually thought the case was closed, given that Inspector Canard is pretty convinced that we're we're the guilty party. Let's break in. Unlike you, I respect authority and law. No one will enter the bank until the crime is solved. Yeah, we'll just see about that. Then why are you hanging around here? You look kind of suspicious to me. I didn't rob the bank, if that's what you're insinuating. I don't know. Most robberies are inside jobs. Maybe. But all criminals return to the scene of the crime. And here you are. Let's talk about something else. Um, okay. Uh, I hear my parole officer calling. See you later. This bank sure has a lot of windows. Wow, Lucretown is a sewage system. How nice is that? I wonder if I can get into the bank through here. I dropped the sword into the sewers. Oh well. Now it's a broken and very stinky sword. Okay, guess we don't need that. There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says Cindy loves Jed, but scratched out right next to that it says Harry loves Cindy. What a weird place to profess your love for someone. Okay, we need to remember that. Cindy, Harry, Jed, I think what's that? There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says Cindy loves Jed, but scratched out right next to that it yep. says Harry loves Cindy. What a weird place to profess your love Cindy, for someone. Cindy, Jed, Harry. Because we're gonna need that in here. Welcome to the Palace of Prostheses, home of the no detection, no infection, no rejection, 30 day guarantee. You smell new. Who are you? It's me, <laughs> your Uncle Freddy. No, you're not. What do you mean? Don't you recognize me? No, Uncle Freddy smells more like lemon bean curd. 
Okay, you got me. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Who are you? Oh, I'm Dave. Around here, they call me Dead Eye Dave. I'm Wonder the Dry Island area's foremost expert in anatomical approximation. So, how's the prosthetics business? Uh, it's been better. Let me guess. An Australian land developer is using strong-arm tactics to try and buy up your business. What? Where'd you get a weird idea like that? Well, I just figured... Well, you figured wrong. Australia, what kind of a name is that anyway? Uh, never mind. So what is wrong with your business? My monkey left me. Oh no, that's horrible. Um... Okay, I'll bite. What was so important about your missing monkey? Because Pongo handled all my paperwork and deliveries. He was the only one who understood my back office's automated filomatic filing system. Without him, I have no idea which orders go with which customers. It's really upsetting my regular clientele. That's terrible. Have you heard from your filing monkey since he disappeared? What's he gonna do? Send me a postcard? Uh, not to be insensitive, but are you blind? Do I look blind? I don't know. The twin eye patches could be some sort of hip new pirate fashion statement. Of course I'm blind, you lilac scented party waste! Sorry. <laughs> don't give it a second thought. My other senses more than compensate for my lack of sight. For example, I usually can identify my customers by their distinctive individual odors. You can recognize people by their smell? Usually, no problem. Today, though, my nose is stuffed up because I got a, a bit of a cold. So I can only recognize amplified odors, like the lilac aftershave you generously applied to your face. Fortunately, my hearing's still sharper than a barge full of bunnies. Yeah, we'll just see about that. So how sharp is your hearing anyway, Paul? Sharp enough, Pinky. Um... I'm looking for a no-nosed pirate thief. Well, we certainly get a lot of those around here. Thieves? N no, no-nosed pirates. Really? Oh my, yes. You'd be amazed how often pirates lose their honkers. Does this pirate thief of yours have a name? Not that I know of. Oh, that's... Sure you do. Bad. Of course, even if I knew the pirate's name, it probably wouldn't matter. Without Pongo, I wouldn't be able to retrieve your pirate's file. I'm looking for some gifts for my differently abled pirate friends. Then you've come to the right place. What kinds of prostheses did you have in mind? Um. Yeah, let's just skip these. They won't do anything for us and they're not all that fun. What have you got that's free? Free? <laughs> what do you think I'm running? A charity? What can I say? I'm broke. <sighs> Okay, you've appealed to my sense of generosity. Here's what I'll do. I'll let you have one of my untested, unguaranteed, unapproved experimental prosthetic devices. Neat. What kind of prosthetic devices are we talking about? I'll let you choose. To restore it. Huh? Humor me. Once upon a time, there was a pirate named... See, this is where we need the name from that uh, manhole cover. Harry? Harry, a palm reader, had told Harry that he was destined to marry a beautiful singer named... Cindy. Cindy? Cindy. Unfortunately, Cindy's hand had already been promised to a vile cad named... Jed. Jed? That's right. Jed. Well? Well, what? What happened? Realizing that beauty was only skin deep, she married the ugliest man in town. The end. What a dreadful story. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? This is something special. It's a sample of my newly created, ultra stretchy, one size fits all prosthetic skin. Yeah. With just a few square feet of this miracle substance, a pirate can replace all the skin he's lost during a lifetime of sword fighting, knife fighting, keel hauling, and the occasional flogging. And it comes complete with a set of tiny hooks for easy attachment. I repeat. Yeah. 
Yep, it's gross, but we need that. See you later. That makes one of us. Although, it's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. It's a wooden hand. I heard that. I hope you're planning to pay for that hand. It ain't cheap. Actually, I don't have a dime. Well, then, you'd best be putting it back then, eh, Tiger? Sorry. Okay, then. Let's test just how good his hearing is. With... this. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Hmm. Guess not. Okay, then. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. Yes, I know. Did I hear something? Nope, just the haunting melodies of my music box. Here we go. We're gonna need that in a little bit. And let's pick this on up again. Not really sure if we need that, but it's always nice to have a music box. When the going gets tougher. Um, so now to... Oh, right. Make some use of this disgusting skin. Hey, it's like a trampoline. Ugh. I'm not picking that up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! Alrighty. Um, let's see if I can remember all the stuff we need to do here. Need to turn on the lights. It controls that light. Technology marches forward. I won't. You see, even. Wait. Scupperware. Oh yeah, and notice just above the railing to the left here, that looks an awful like, a lot like a nose. What's that shadow? It looks like a nose? Hey, a prosthetic nose! Yeah, see. I'll bet this belongs to that smelly pirate guy, the one with no nose. I'll take that, Mr. Threepwood. Ah, what are you doing in here? I might ask you the same question. Instead, I'll just take that as evidence. Let's go try it on Pegnose. What a great idea. Except no one knows where he is. Bring him in, and I'll consider it. But remember this. Even if it fits, it only proves he was in the bank. It doesn't tie him to the loop. You still think I did it, don't you? Yes, but I can be swayed by the right evidence. Now get out of here. Okay. Funny that it doesn't stick around to make sure I uh, actually leave the building. Ow. Well done. So that's about all we needed to do in there. Um. I don't have anything interesting to say. Um, let's see. I don't know if we have anything. Oops. Mm, doesn't look like it. It's an empty perfume spritzer. House of Sticks. It's a second encounter with a certain gentleman. Freddy, where's my new walking stick? It's right over here, Mr. Mandrill. A brand new cane, hand carved to the exact specifications of your previous stick. It better be, or I'll buy up your putrid little shop and replace it with something useful, like a public urinal. 
I uh, take it that you'll be putting this on your tab, Mr. Mandrel? What do you think? You know, if I weren't a peaceable sort, I'd whack that gentleman over the head with one of my sticks. I wouldn't stop whacking until his brains leaked out all over my rustic, hand-polished hardwood floor. <laughs> yep. Whoa. But you're a peaceable sort, right? Yep. I, yep. I like it when he says that. Sounds great. No need to make a racket ringing that bell. I'm right here. Hey, sorry. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. What's your racket? Most people around here call me Freddy, which is a sensible thing to do, considering that it's my name and all. I carve <laughs> walking sticks. I wouldn't think that a walking stick shop could support itself on a pirate-infested island. Well, under normal circumstances, I might agree with that sentiment. But lately, Luker Island's been experiencing an influx of tourists, gawkers, and other assorted outsiders. They're always more than eager to purchase my authentic pirate walking sticks at a reasonable markup, of course. Besides which, I can always depend on Mr. Mandrel to break a few dozen sticks a week. He's been single-handedly keeping me in business for months. A few dozen a week? Whoa. So the walking stick market is booming, is that it? Well, no, I wouldn't exactly call it booming. But it's putting food on the table. And if Mr. Mandrel ever pays off his tab, I can retire. You wouldn't happen to know anything about a no-nosed pirate, would you? Well, now, that sounds a lot like Peg-Nosed Pete. What would you like to know about him? Who is he? Peg-Nose? He's the greatest pirate thief on Lucar Island. No one's come within a ship's broadside of putting him in leg irons yet. But I came close. Once. No. Yes, it happened one dark and foggy night. Many years ago, I was out testing out one of my new walking stick models, the WD-32. It has a real fancy looking wooden duck engraved in the handle, and he tried to mug me. Gosh, what did you do? Well, I wasn't gonna stand for that. I raised my cane up to give him a good whack on the noggin, you betcha. And? And he ran away. I didn't even get a chance to swing. I guess he knows better than to mess with old Freddy. Yep. Fascinating. Yeah. Sure, that's what happened. Where can I find him? You can't. Come again? No one knows <laughs> where Peg Nose's hideout is. Oh, sure. There's some rumors of him living in the middle of the treacherous Mists o Time Marsh. But frankly, I, I don't believe a human being can get there from here. What happened to his nose? That's something of a mystery. Most folks around these parts would tell you it was nibbled off by a duck. Yeah. Personally, I don't believe it. Why not? Well, sir, it's been my experience that ducks have exceptionally tiny teeth. It'd take a long time experience? for a duck, even a particularly nasty duck, to nibble off a man's nose. I can't imagine a man letting a duck peck away at his nose for hours on end without seeking medical help. Good point. <laughs> Why is he trying to frame me? I have no idea. On second thought, I think I'll find out about Pegnose on my own. Makes no never mind to me, Junior. Why do you put up with that rude, stick-breaking customer? You mean Mr. Mandrel? Well, for one thing, he's rich. If he ever pays off his tab, I'll be able to retire. For another thing, he's a steady customer. Barely a day goes by when he doesn't break his walking stick in a fit of rage and demand a new one. For a third thing, he's not too bright. I've been carving new sticks for him for months. And he's never noticed that I just keep gluing the same stick back together over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> you old swindler, you. Can you help me? I can't decide which walking stick is right for me. Well, now, in order to choose the right stick, we'll need to know a little about your walking stick needs. Where do you expect to be doing most of your walking? Um... Yes, I am a mighty pirate after all. Back and forth on the deck of my mighty pirate ship. Oh, I see. And how many people would you expect to be walking with? Um... It 
it'll just be me and a few close friends. That's probably wise. How long will you be walking on average? <laughs> Three minutes. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for the biblical version. Forty days and forty nights. Will you be parting any seas along the way? Um, no. <laughs> well then, taking all your answers into consideration, not to mention the numerous personal observations I've made of your movements, I believe that the perfect walking stick for you would be the Veeblefester 9000 Rainforest Deluxe. As luck would have it, we've got dozens of them in stock. Yeah, see, because I've played this game before and tried other options, I can tell you positively that he says the same every time. If I had a hamster, I could use this stuff for bedding. Bye, Freddy. Okay, time to go make our very own cologne. Oh, the peg nose. See, we're gonna need that in order to have that eye Dave identify him for us. Oops. Um, let's start out by heading here. See, we can actually take the raft, but we are never, like, never gonna find our way to Pignos hideout. Which is just right here in the mists of mist so time marsh, I think it was called. Uh, there are uh, there is a certain set of swamp scented perfume. Quiet you. Um, we need a set of directions from Dead Eye Day. Let's press here. Um. Oh shit! It's a That's pleasant just... smelling flower. I forgot how to combine it. Um. Oh, here we go. Me? How did I forget that all of a sudden? It's not like it's the first time I do it. There. That should make my concoction smell better. It's the official symbol of the governor's office. And while we're here... Hey! Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? Just a little old... ...bringing and entering. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. A pirate? I hate pirates. My name is Ozzy. Ozzy Mandrill. That name sounds familiar. <laughs> Aren't you the forgotten member of a famous country western singing clan? Don't play the gink with me, Threepwood. Who's playing? Well then, allow me to illuminate the dingy corners of your mind. Ozzy Mandrill is a businessman, a capitalist, a real estate developer. I'm also the future king of the Caribbean. <laughs> hey, you're the guy who's trying to buy out the scum bar. The scum bar? That's just the tip of the aardvark. I'm gonna buy the whole Caribbean. You fiend. Why are you buying up all the land in the Caribbean? Because I'm a man with a vision. You too? What are yours like? I see a Caribbean freed from the chaotic plundering of grog-swilling pirates. 
a Caribbean made safe for the orderly consumerism of family-oriented themed restaurants and resorts. A Caribbean scrub clean of filth. A Caribbean you'd be proud to take home to your mother. Gee, mine are mostly about ice cream. And how do all my pirate friends fit into your capitalist utopia? Ah, oh, they'll be retrained. Retrained? Yes, the service-based economies of tomorrow's Caribbean will need legions of waiters, janitors, maids, and dishwashers. <laughs> but what about pirates who don't want to be waiters, janitors, and dishwashers? What makes you think they'll have a choice? <laughs> I do not like this guy. Not one bit. And how do the dozens of pirate support industries fit into your scheme? They'll be torn down, of course. No more will these islands be cursed with a blight of run-down watering holes, murky voodoo shops, and disease-ridden houses of ill repute. Instead, our streets will be decorated with classy art houses, whimsical theme restaurants, and upscale knick-knack shops. Well, at least he does have a plan. But what about the stores that won't sell out? Ah, they always sell out, eventually. <laughs> but what about the children? What about them? I don't know, just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I'm tired of discussing your warped dreams. And I'm tired of discussing them. What's your beef with pirates? Well, for one thing, pirate smell. The only thing that smells worse than a pirate is two pirates. It's enough to make a man park a tiger on the rug. Uh, yeah. What the hell right. does that mean? Is there anything else you hate about pirates? Not much. Oh? Other than the fact that they're an uncouth subculture of illiterate yobbos who make it impossible for a hard-working businessman to earn an honest quid without worrying about being sacked and or pillaged. Not much, really. Ah. What's with all the dead animals? I like having them around. They remind me of where I came from. Burbank? Australia, <laughs> you ninny. Oh. My navigator tells me that you're pretty good with an insult. Pretty good? Listen, Kitty Wink, I'll have you know that my insults have finished off over 500 hostile takeovers. There isn't a man alive or dead who can withstand the might of my withering barbs. I bet I can beat you. Oh, uh, really? And what stakes do you propose? If I win, you have to tell me all your secret evil plans. Fine. And if I win, you have to leave my house. Agreed. So, what form of insult game shall we play? Let's stick to the basics, shall we? On guard. Touche. Oh, that is so cliche. This is the end for you, you gutter crawling cur. I've got a little tip for you. Get the point. You wouldn't know Christmas from Burke Street. I have hmm. no idea what you just said, yet I feel strangely insulted. When I'm done with you, you'll wish you had Baku rot. Shit. I'm what, 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 what? You got kangaroos in the top paddock. Well, I see why this guy's uh, unbeatable in insult games. Nobody understands his Australian lingo. Well, did you read duty you do? Naturally. Now get out of my house. Okay then. We will get back to this place later. But for now it's fine. Uh, let's see what we have so far. Hmm. 
need to head to the bait shop. like dead fish in here. Nine kinds of dead fish, huh? Ugh. There. That should make the concoction smell interesting. It's the official symbol of the governor's office. I can scoop up a whole bunch of bait with this. Hey, only one per customer. Darn. It's an empty scupperware container. Mm. Oh, there it is. I think we need there. to. Now my bait will stay fresh. Here we go. Glad he didn't notice. Nothing like the smell of rotting bait to woo the ladies. I think that's it. Let's have a talk to the salty old cur. Excuse me. Yes. Do you have any bait that could catch a cold? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a tiger by the tail? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a thief? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a red grouper? For the last time. Oh, yes. That free stuff over there will work fine. Gotcha. How's the bait business? Uh, it stinks. <laughs> You're telling me. P.U. No, I mean it's horrible. Um... I bet business would pick up if you crack open a window every now and then. Why, I tried that! Well, did it help? No. In fact, it seemed to drive prospective customers away. And that's when I realized, see, that something strange is going on in here. Strange? How so? Well, it may be the chum talking, but I could swear that Luca Island is getting less and less pirate-friendly. Really? How? Why, we've been besieged! By hostile invaders? Weiss! Tourists! Ah. Yipes. There aren't many of them around today, but you hang around for a week and they'll pop up like a bloated corpse in a calm sea. But they, they've been driving some of Luca's oldest pirate-oriented businesses into new fields and have compelled some of our nastier pirates to consider new lifestyle choices. Why, I myself have soiled my once noble bait shop with a cheesy Timite Tychus in a desperate attempt to get me hands on some of those tourist shekels. Well, is it working? Not very well. Insects seem to repel tourists almost as much as fish guts. Go figure. Is the bait business getting any better? Nope. It still stinks. Huh. Do you know anything about a no-nosed pirate thief? That sounds like Peg Nose Pete. You know him? Are you kidding? Everyone on Lucar Island is hide a Peg Nose Pete. Who is he? Boy, oh, he's the most notorious thief on Lucar Island. He's never been caught, and his loot has never been recovered. And his true face, aside from his trademark false nose, has never been seen. Well, I've seen his true face. It's not pretty. Yeah, right. And I've seen a bucket of chum solve complex math problems. <laughs> You're calling me a liar? Where can You're I go? But you can't. Nobody can. There's rumor that his hideout is somewhere in the heart of the mists of time marsh. Great. I'm off to the marsh. But no one has ever been able to navigate their way through the marsh without getting hopelessly lost. It's cursed. Darn. Another curse. How did he lose his nose? Oh, that's one of the darkest mysteries of Luca Island. Uh, some would have you believe that Pegnose's proud proboscis was pecked off by a duck. 
<laughs> but I believe it was a school of deranged flounder that made off with his hunker. Mm -hmm. That's one of the darkest mysteries of Luker Island? No, oh, no. But it sounds more ominous that way. <laughs> Good point. How does he smell without a nose anyway? Uh, awful. I guess I should have seen that one coming. Yep. Let's talk about something else. Well, whatever skins your salmon. Why is that bait over there free? Well, that bait is nearly expired. I need to get rid of it before it goes bad. How does bait go bad? Oh, the usual ways. Falls in with the wrong crowd, starts <laughs> rebelling against authority, begins dating bait of loose virtue. And before you know it, the bait's gone bad. If the bait can start doing all that, it, I'd say it's bad already. Gee. I think I'll just look around for a while. Well, you look all you like, but if you break it, you board it. Nope, I'm pirate. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at these guys. Wee, look at the cute little termite circus. It's just like a flea circus, but with termites. Impressive is how they don't eat all the wood and stuff. I want to see them getting the cannon. How the shit did he train them to do this anyway? Whee! Okay. That was exciting. See, this is what we need the wooden prosthetic hat for. Mm, this requires stealth. Come and get it, boys! Ah, look at those little buggers go! They must be real hungry for the taste of redwood. And off we go. Oh, we can even see the palace of prosthesis. Prosthesis? On the background. Oh, that's actually a really nice overlook. Nice. Um... Yes? Can I play next? Sure, if you don't mind waiting a few hours. Oh, why so long? I'll tell you why. Because Lardbot the pirate here can't concentrate on the game for more than two minutes at a time. Can I help it if I have a wide variety of interests that cause my mind to wander? Yes, a wide variety of culinary interests, you mean. Well, I never. You never move, you mean? So who's winning? It's hard to say. I've been pressing Senor Castaneda's queen with my Montgolfier offensive. But I think the miserable Getz got me stymied with his Estrada barricade. Ah, I see. I'm looking for a no-nosed pirate. Yes. Does he play chess? I don't think so. Then I don't care. Huh. Yipes! There's a spider on your shoulder! Where? Oops. It was just a weather balloon. What? Giant lizard! Where? Haha! <laughs> nice move, Brainiac! That doesn't count. You know the rules. You let go of a piece, it's a move! But, but, but. Rules are rules, Tabo. Fine. Um. Yes? Your friend seems awfully focused on the game. Notice that, did you? Senor Castaneda is exceptionally well-disciplined. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's nearly impossible to shift his attention. Except... Yes? Well, he does carry something of a torch for Brittany, the bank teller. Interesting. So Castaneda really has a thing for the bank teller, huh? Oh, yes. He carries a picture of Brittany with him wherever he goes. Oh. This is a stalker right here. I'll let you get back to your game. Thank you. Um... Yes? 
I am not gonna go through the first three. Brittany, look out! <gasps> Brittany, where? <laughs> Ooh, good move. Don't tell me you're gonna count that! You bet your bonny butt I am! You unbelievable jerk! Who was it told me that rules are rules, Tabo? Fine. You wanna see a move? Here's a move! You call that a move? This is a move! You can't do that! Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Sweat factory! No scabbling! Bug magnet! La -da 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 -da. Doily sniffer! Um. Let's see if our perfume is good enough. I hope so. That's an all too familiar smell. Guess I can't complain though, since Denver N. Ticonderoga is my best customer. Denver N. Ticonderoga. The man regularly buys prosthetic noses from me. Really? He's my, uh, really good friend. Yeah. I lost track of him and, uh, missed him so much that I made a little odor potion to remind me of him. Okay, too much information. <laughs> I have a strict rule of don't ask, don't smell. Well, anyways, if you know where I can find my, uh, friend, that'd be very helpful. Oh, yeah, sure. He lives out past the mists of time, Mike. Nice. You can't get through there, though, without the directions he gave me, and it's filed away someplace in my file matic system. Well, let's go get that file. I can't. Pongo, my filing monkey, ran away a while back. He was the only one who knew how to run the file matic As a result, I have no idea how to retrieve the map. But if you can figure it out, feel free. The controls are right here. Let's see if I can remember this. I think this will do the trick. It's some sort of document. The name on it says, Cosilla J. Yellow Yapper. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. See, the trick is that um, each of these symbols represents a range of letters. I can't remember the exact order, but I think it's something like A to D, E to H, perhaps, and so on, I think. Let's try it again. The first one was right, that I'm sure. The name on it says, Cosilla J. Yellow Yapper. It nope. has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescription. Let's try. Oh, which one came before banana? I think it was monkey. Let's see what this does for us. The name on it says Bobo M. Unky. It has all sorts of useless information. Nope. Um, maybe we actually need to turn this once. And this one. No. Oh, what? Oh no, I was actually right. There was one in the middle, I think. The name on it says Franklin R. Ingdingling. <laughs> what? 
Okay, this one needs to stop that. This one needs to go back to Bunny. I think this one needs to be banana. Yep, I think that's it. There are directions to Pegno's Pete's house. Lovely. Yeah. Looks more like a train schedule to me. Yep, we are gonna need that in a minute. I think we have what we need to get this show on the road. However, hey, this has actually turned out to be a pretty long episode compared to what uh, I usually do. So I'm gonna take a break right here, and when we get back, we'll head off to Pegno's Eats Hideout. Well, first off, the Mists of Time Marsh, and then to his hideout. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching, hope I'll see you next time, and don't forget to throw me a comment or a thumbs up or something if you like it, and subscribe if you want to see more. So thank you guys, and bye!